Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Serrano and today we're going to be taking a look at the 53 tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A03s. But if it's your very first time to the channel, do me a quick favor. If you're brand new to the channel and you're a huge fan of budget technology, um, I encourage you to subscribe and get notified for more videos just like this. But if you're already a part of the crew, salute. Oh god guys, so the first trick that I wanted to show you was how to make the keyboard vibrate. And in order to do that, you would basically go into your settings menu, which is going to be located right here. And then also you would just go into sounds and vibrations. And once you locate that right at the top, right here, you're going to basically go into your, um, you know, sound and control right here down below. And then you're going to have the option to hit right here where it says uh, key Samsung keyboard and you can basically have that sound for the Samsung keyboard. But just keep in mind the sounds are at the top and the vibrations are at the bottom. So if you wanted to get a sound as well on the touch, you would just hit this top icon as well. All right guys, so the, for the second um, tip, we're gonna go into sounds and vibrations. Okay guys, so the second feature we're going to do is going to be found in sounds and vibration. Just hit that right at the top, scroll all the way down until you see something goes quality, uh, sound quality and effects. Make sure you hit that and then you're going to see Dolby Atmos experiencing breakthrough audio for media and playback that flows above or and around you. And then you can actually activate Dolby Atmos for gaming with realistic Dolby Atmos sound automatically when you're playing games which is pretty cool but just keep in mind in order to, have to activate that you have to have bluetooth or a headphone jack plugged in now another really cool feature is found inside of sound and vibration you just go into separate app sound right here and what it's going to be able to do is connect um, play media from one app on a different audio device and then it says make sure that you choose an audio device that's different from the main audio output device. And so you, you can choose between all these different apps right here. And you, it gives you a list of all the apps you can choose from, which is um, gonna be mainly all of your apps right here. Then you could just go back and then you have the option to choose the audio device as well. So essentially what enables you to do is basically choose an app you wanna play audio from and then choose a separate audio device you wanna play it from, like headphones, like Bluetooth headphones. And then basically, it'll let you just play that one media sound from a, that main audio device and it just locks into that one app so it won't be the sound for like your whole phone and everything like that. Now, another thing you are able to do is change the vibration haptics on this device. So you can go into sounds and vibration and then when you see right here, you can see the vibration intensity. And then you'll be able to adjust that to your own preference. If you enjoy a little bit more haptics, you can keep it at the highest part, low haptics. So it gives you the option to basically choose how you want the haptics to feel on the device. On edge lighting, which is actually pretty cool. And if you wanna find that feature, basically all you would have to do is just go into briefings pop up right here at the top and cl click that and then you're going to see something here called edge lighting style and then you can go ahead and navigate through how you want your notification to come through and choose the color that you want um it to be as well so i think that's pretty cool but it will let you choose the color and you can choose advanced so you can make it short or long but um just a really nice feature to have for your edge notifications and then you can also change color by keyword as well so it will brighten up your notification with colors when your titles match the names um, or words that matter to you or whatever now the next feature i want to talk about is notifications and floating um chat bubbles so you just click right here where it says that and it's going to give you options where you can go into your um, notifications and floating bubbles. So basically in order to get to that, you'd hit advanced and then you could see right here, you have the option now for 
different conversations and floating notifications. As you can see, we have them off right now, but you can make it so that they are bubbles or the smart pop-up feature, which I think is pretty cool. And of course, if you are still in advance, you can go ahead and click advanced settings. And this will allow you to show your battery percentage at the top of the right top corner. So you can see that when you're, so you don't have to pull down because when you have that turned off, it won't show up unless you pull down on the notification shade. And another thing that's pretty cool is if you're in notifications and you go to advanced settings, you can click this option called icon badges. And instead of showing the number of notifications that you want that it pops up on, it'll just show a dot and you can just do that and you can keep it as notifications on app icons, hold and touch the icon to show the notification. So then now when you hold the uh, icon, it's going to show the notification when you uh, basically hold it to touch it and hold the, the app and it'll, it'll basically show notifications after you do that. So for instance, here's the icon with the dot. Now let's just hold it and it has the notification right below. Now the next thing that's pretty crazy is that you can adjust your notifications for Amber alerts inside of advanced settings under wirelessly wireless emergency alerts and you can disable uh, you could allow all the alerts extreme threats severe threats amber alerts test threats uh and vibration as well as a alert reminder never or like once and then you, it'll let you uh actually speak alert text message here as well which is pretty crazy another thing is if you go into accessibility on here it's gonna allow you to do a basically if you go to advanced right here It'll say flash notification. So when you hit that, the camera will flat the, the light on the back of the camera flash will light up every time you get a notification. But the only thing that's weird about that is if you're in public and someone sees it, they might think you're taking a picture of them or something, which kind of sucks. But other than that, it's pretty cool. Now, maybe you want to learn how to take a screenshot. So all you would do is go inside of, um, you know, like you know, social media or something like that. And let's say you see something pretty cool. All you have to do is long hold the power button and the volume rocker at the exact same time. So let me just wait till that straightens out and you just press that at the exact same time. Let's just do that one more time. And then you hold it for about a second or something. You're going to see this edit button pop up. And this part will give you the uh, screen options. You can do edit. You can go to the gallery now and check out the options. You can go immediately to edit mode right here. And um, automatically it's going to give you the same edit options right here. So you could just mess around with it or whatever. But it's got the pencil. It's got the uh, all the features here to mess around with it. Even like um, text and, and emojis and even the bit emoji, which is pretty cool. So you could play around with that. Also, make sure you go into display and just mess around with the navigation bar, which is at the bottom. And what I like to use is gestures. But if you're the type of person that likes buttons, that option is also available. And you can also do the gesture sensitivity. You can make it super, uh, you know, super cool, like uh the higher the sensitivity, it might be like more easier to react when you touch it. So you can see right here, the the, the sensitivity area becomes lesser, but the more you turn that up, the, the higher the sensitivity becomes on the sides, which is uh, basically if you're gaming, you actually want to lower that or whatever. I would also change the screen timeout from 30 seconds to maybe about two minutes, just so that your screen doesn't time out when you're doing something important. And inside a display as well, I would also just scroll down until you see accidental touch protection and protect your phone from accidental touches when it's in your pocket or your bag. So it definitely would activate that as well. But since we're inside a display, just go to font and style and click that option. And then you're also gonna see an option where it says right here, font and style, and just hit that option. And you could change from these three fonts, but if you're not happy with those three, it'll take you straight to the 
store where you can actually purchase your own font or you may even be able to score a free one directly from the Play Store. So they do have a few of them that are actually free or, as well. So, you know, you may be able to get one of those of your own preference, but um, I definitely think that's pretty cool that they do offer more fonts for this device. So the next thing you do is just go into notification and you want to actually change the notification sound. It's going to pop up really right here down below where it says notification sound. And you just hit that. And then you can actually change the ringtone or the notification sound right here as well as the volume for your phone. But if you just want to change the volume of your phone, just click the bottom button right here. Um, and get out of here first. And then when you hit that, it's basically going to show you the side toggle. You could just hit the three dots right at the top and then you'll have the, you know, right now my phone is on do not disturb, but you do have, the media toggle, the volume, and the um, main volume for your phone. But right here down at the bottom, you can use volume keys for media. So you can control media volume by default when you press the volume keys, when you turn this button on. Now still, while we're in the volume screen, you wanna click on the three dots right here, and it's gonna add the media volume limit. So you can actually turn that on just to protect your ears so that if it gets too loud, the phone will let you know. The next week feature we want to explore is in wallpaper. We're going to hit that and go down to the bottom where it says explore more wallpapers. And then that's where you would get more wallpapers. If you did so desire, you could just download it straight from here. There are some that are free, but there are also some that you would have to pay for. But another thing that you could do is just search for whatever you want to be your wallpaper on Google and then just long press it just like this and keep your thumb down until you see the option that says download now and then just look for it on your smart device but if you want to take a step further and customize your themes icons um back um you know highlight colors and everything like that you can hit themes and you will be able to just change it with one of these paid key themes or one of the customizable free themes that are offered by um, the Samsung Galaxy store and everything like that. Now, another thing I like to establish on my phone is a VPN network. So basically all you have to do is go into uh, the connections option on your phone. And then when you're in the option right there, you can click more settings right here, click VPN and go ahead, download adguard.com uh, or just go on um, Chrome and just look for adguard. And then go ahead and download that free VPN as well. Now you also could go into home screen. And when you're inside of the home screen option, just hit that. And what you want to do is go into landscape rotate option. So basically when you're in the home screen, it will rotate um, for you when you're switching your phone around different directions. Do me a favor, if you've made it this far, I truly appreciate you. Do me a favor, take a break real quick. Maybe grab like, do a bathroom break, come back, grab a bag of chips or something like that. Or like... All right guys, so the next thing that I wanted to show you guys was on uh, the home screen as well. And it's basically gonna be inside of the home screen menu. Uh, swipe down for notification panel right here. Cause when you actually swipe down with the where the fingerprint like from from not the fingerprint but where the screen is right here it's actually going to bring the notification panel down which is going to be a lot easier so you don't have to reach and everything like that you can also access dynamic wallpaper on the lock screen setting feature which is going to be pretty cool so basically all you have to do is go to lock screen um, on your phone basically so you're here right here where you see wallpaper services and um, we can see right here has the dynamic lock screen feature. So you would have to apply and hit that. And then it would just basically give you these really cool different home screen themed um, lock screens. You can choose the ones you want or choose auto update and it'll just like basically customize your lock screen automatically. And also inside of the wallpaper searches, you have swipe left for info. And so like if you're inside of there, so if you right there and so you could just mess around with that feature 
from the lock screen area. Another thing that I think that I, I really like about the lock screen area is that they did include uh, the widgets that you want to use. So you can include the weather as well as today's schedule. Also, um, the digital well-being or even the voice recorder app, which is pretty cool. Another thing I think you should definitely do is go to contact information inside of the lock screen and just type in an email address or some way for people to contact you just in case you lose your phone. And then you can go ahead and save it. So when people do pick up and find your phone, they will be able to notify you by email or phone. Another thing that's pretty cool is you can also customize the shortcuts inside of lock screen. And so the left and right one, which are usually the camera, are now giving you free range to choose the left one as well as the right one. And you could pretty much choose any app free range. It doesn't matter. Like they give you a whole, the whole list from your shortcut menu that you can actually choose for the left or the right uh, lock screen um, app, which is pretty cool. Another thing that you can activate from the privacy part of your device is going to be right here. And you're going to be able to access uh, something through privacy. Actually, it's insecurity. So let's just go back one more step. And once I find it, I'll let, let you guys know. But um, security should be somewhere at the uh, top of the device, usually. And so on this one, they actually call it biometrics and security. So let's just kick, click right there. And you're going to go be able to find the private share feature, which will actually let you share your um, information and files via a, a you know like a like a dummy um phone number so you basically can choose a file or whatever and then just go ahead click that and hit done and then basically you could send it to whoever you want but it's going to be like a dummy uh phone number so the person who gets it won't know your information or whatever so i think that's something that's pretty cool and while you're in security another thing you could do is go to more biometrics and actually turn off show unlock transition feature just in case you didn't like that but it's definitely right here for you to actually mess around with if you do want to turn it off and on now another feature that seems to be hidden is pin windows which is actually inside of biometrics and security you have to swipe down and click other security settings and then go down all the way to the bottom and then you can turn on pin windows. So now when you go into most recent, you do have the option to long hold and pin an app now, which is cool. Now, another cool feature this device does have with it is device care. So we're going to take a look at that right now and just jump into that. And there is a feature where you can optimize this device right here just by hitting the button at the bottom. And it will check for malware and no battery high optimization and stuff like that things of that nature and then once it's done it'll tell you how everything is going is everything is pretty much going to be all set inside of here is device protection and you can scan your phone through the mal um you know malware app and it will scan entirely through your whole entire device to determine if there's any viruses or anything of that nature so finally after it's done scanning the entire device it's going to give you a message that says whether you have threats and in my case i have no threats found the last the last option they give you is inside of memory where you can actually check the memory and go ahead and clean it up so that your device will be more optimized and just more smooth when you're using your phone overall one of the things I like to do is when I'm inside a battery, I go down to more settings at the very bottom and then turn on adaptive battery because that's just going to give me a better battery percentage as well. And then I can have my battery percentage on too. Now, if you want to play around with the phone a little bit more quicker and have like more access to it without having to scroll down and move your finger all the way down to the bottom of the phone, you can turn on the motions and gestures right here in advanced features. So you just go ahead, turn on um, double tap to turn on the device, double tap to turn off. You also have turn over to mute and fingerprint gesture on the side right here. 
so you can swipe down with the media control so you don't have to actually reach around on the phone as much. It just kind of makes it a little bit easier as well. And again, they do have that one-handed mode right here where you can just turn that on, swipe down from the middle of the bottom of the device right here and just swipe down right there. And you can actually turn on that one-handed mode. And of course, the side key is going to be very helpful because you're going to be able to launch your camera with the side key or with any other app. And sometimes you could even um, customize it to be like a flashlight or something. But right here, it's just giving you the option for any other app at the moment that you didn't want to use. And I think that's something that's pretty cool as well. Now, if you were in phone calls right here and you just saw numbers here, you could actually swipe to the right to call or swipe left to send a message when you're inside of this phone icon right here, which is pretty cool. But of course, if you wanted to just block a random message, you could just long hold the message, hit the three dots right next to it right here, and then just hit this block button and then go ahead and hit OK. And then I'll just remove that option as well. Another really f cool feature I noticed inside of messages is if you hit this, hit the three dots right next to it and hit device pairing, it gives you the option to actually send and receive messages on your another device like a tablet or a laptop or a Windows PC or something of that nature. Now, the next feature I wanted to point out is inside of advanced features down here at the very bottom and you're going to go inside of screenshots which is inside of advanced features and you're going to see the screenshot toolbar kit right here and it's going to give you the option to show additional options after you take a screenshot so you can turn that on or you could just turn that feature completely off now, if you did want to enter uh, split screen mode you would just lift up the screen just in this nature and then just long hold this option until you see open split screen view. And then from here, you can access another app. In this case, I would just click the other app. And then now we're actually in this split screen mode, which can be used at three quarters at horizontal mode, which is very helpful. And let's just see if we can do that with three quarters on vertical mode as well. So yes, we can do it on vertical mode. So I definitely think that's something that's really convenient and helpful that you can put it three quarters of the way or even you know halfway on the screen vertical or horizontal now if you like that split screen view something that's really better than that is this option right here called pop-up view and you can actually hit that and what it is is you can shrink the little window on the screen to your own preference and move it around and then when you're done with it you could just hit the side option right here or um, swipe up on it, I believe. But basically you could even long hold it and it gives you these options right here to actually expand the window back or just do whatever you want, close it out, everything like that. Now, if you wanna turn off the most recommended apps on your recent menu, just go up right here, hit the three dots on the most recent apps menu, hit settings. And then just turn this option off where it says show recommended apps. Now, another really cool feature that I like is to turn on the camera. And that's really quick when you just double tap this power button, which is also the side mounted fingerprint sensor. So if you do it too slow, it won't open the camera. But if you do it quick enough, it will actually launch the camera. So let me just try that one more time. So you have to activate the side key again from any app to the one that says camera. And then when you actually set it to camera, you can easily open up your camera with a double click, which is pretty cool. Now, another thing I like about the camera in here is that it has the wide angle um, camera on the front facing camera and also does have location tags. So I'm going to turn that on. And then I also have the wide angle front facing camera, which is actually pretty cool. Now, one of the things that I always do is turn on palm shooting, which is found inside of shooting methods right here. So when it's on your face and you just put up your palm, it'll take a picture of your face. 
and then you can also do uh the option right here where it says you can hit the button on the side to take the the picture or zoom so sometimes i like to do both so when i'm usually using the phone in with the rear camera and taking a picture on my face with the rear camera that's when i use um this one on the top but when i'm using the rear camera to zoom in on different things that's when i use the zoom option and you can also control the volume as well as as another um, bunch of options on here as well and i also do have this option called settings to keep so you can keep the camera mode to uh, start camera in the last used mode and uh, such as video instead of always starting with photo or uh, keep the selfie angle the last used in the front instead of switching back to the normal and then also the filters will, will work in that same type of fashion and finally the shutter sound you want to just make sure you turn that off so people don't think that you're taking a picture of them when you're taking a picture out in public and the last feature I like to use on here is the weather app. We'll widget right here down at the bottom. And I could just hit this option where it's weather widget and then hit this option where it says weather and you get a bunch of different cool options here. Um, and I think the last one is cool because it tells you the different days of the week and what weather you're going to be getting. So I like that one the most as my weather widget. Now, the last tip I wanna show you guys is how to clean the pages inside of your app tray. So just swipe up to the app tray and then hit the three dots at the top and then hit clean up pages um, on there right here. And it basically says if there's, it just cleans up all the areas where there's a gap on your app tray. So I thought that was definitely pretty cool, but you get a bunch of other features, but if you found this video helpful, let me know it in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys for watching the 53 tips and tricks for the um, A03S. And I'm going to get right back with you. But make sure you leave a comment down below. Show your support and appreciation. And I'll check you guys later. Um, later, crew. Peace. I'll get right back with you.